Hey everyone, welcome back to So Craftastic. If you're new here, please click the red subscribe button below to become part of the family, and also click the bell button so you will be notified every single time I post a video here. I don't know about you guys, but this year I wanna make my room look really awesome and switch up a lot of my room decor, so I'm going to show you three different kind of vintage styled decor pieces that you can make for your room slash home. I have been paying attention to all your guys' requests, and so many of you wanted to see room decor, and also room decor that is more mature, grown up, a little bit more elegant and not as flashy. They are things that people of all ages can use, so if you're an adult and you're not into like putting emojis all over your room, then this video is for you. Not that emojis have an age limit or anything. If you like room decor videos, please give this video a thumbs up. It'll really help my channel get recommended by YouTube again. I need all the help I can get, so let's get this video to 10,000 thumbs ups. Thumbs ups? Thumbs Thumbs up. Anyway, let's get on into the tutorial. For the first piece of decor, I'm using a sheet of watercolor paper and some acrylic paint in pretty colors. You can see here that I have a paint palette set up with a little bit of water in the three compartments and three colors of paint, of course. So what I'm gonna do is just squeeze out a little bit of the acrylic paint and I'm going to just mix it into the water. And here you can see that I squeezed it into the water, but that is too much paint. You'll see later why I say this, but you wanna make it more watery than I did here. The next step is to protect your work area by putting down a paper bag or plastic, anything that you have, just so you don't get paint all over your table slash carpet or whatever wherever you're working. So I took my mini bamboo skewer and I just put a little bit of the yellow paint onto the paper and then I have a fancy straw and I am blowing onto the paint. If you don't have a straw you can just blow like put your face really close to the paper and blow on the paint. If you happen to get winded and your head feels kind of light it's probably a sign that your paint is not thin enough so you should add more water. That is what I was talking about at the beginning. So here I did not add enough water to my paint and I was I was like really dizzy as I was blowing this, which is weird because you wouldn't think that it would exert that much energy to just blow a little bit of paint, but it, it was not fun. So I just spun the paper around to the other corner and here I have watered down the paint more and you can see how much nicer it flows and it just goes all over and makes some pretty cool effects that are really groovy. No, but it kind of looks like fireworks or splatter paint blobs. And then after you blow as much as you want to, then go ahead and drip some paint splatters all over the paper. However you want to do this, it is up to you. After letting it dry, you can get it ready to insert into your picture frame, if you're putting it in a picture frame, that is. I just put that over and inside the mat, and then I am writing a phrase here. I looked up 70s fonts on Google Images, and I found this one, so I copied all the letters exactly how I saw them to give this more of a vintage vibe, of course. Then I took a Micron pen in brown and I am just filling in all the letters and I'm being very, very careful because if you go out of the lines, you have to start over. So don't go out of the lines. This part is time consuming, but well worth the effort. Also, if you're doing something like this, be extra careful that you don't set your hand on any of the ink while it's drying and smudge it on the rest of the paper. And after it is completely done drying, just wait a little while before going in with an eraser and you can carefully erase the pencil lines that are underneath to tidy it up a bit. But make sure that you test this on a separate piece of paper beforehand to make sure that your eraser is not going to rip the paper or smudge it. Now it's finished and ready to display wherever your heart desires. I put it on my bookshelf, but you could also hang it on the wall or put it anywhere in your house that you'd like. If any of you are wondering, my picture frame is from Michael's Craft Store and and the camera is from Home Goods. I decided to write Young Heart Old Soul inside because I thought that it was very fitting to my personality. Even though I'm an adult, I feel like I've never lost that spark where I can be excited over anything. All the small things actually just make me the happiest person in the world. And Old Soul because a fact about me that some of you may not know is that I love 70s and 80s music so, so much. And my dream car is actually a 1950s Chevy Bel Air in turquoise blue. For the second project, I'm using a wooden dowel and a bunch of yarn. Pick all your favorite colors and then you're gonna cut a ton of strings. 
I didn't measure mine, but it's all up to your personal preference how long you cut each piece. This project is so easy. What you're going to do after you have your yarn folded, you're going to just take that loop, put it under the dowel, and bring the two ends of the yarn up and through. And then you're going to pull tightly like you see me do here. That's seriously the only construction step you're going to repeat until you're finished. Here you can see me doing it again. I just put the loop underneath the dowel and pulled the two strings, the ends up and through. Like this, bam. I just cut a few pieces at the beginning to demonstrate with, but now I'm showing you that it's easiest to cut all your strings at once, all your colors, and get them just laid out on a table. You can of course add more at the end if you need, but here I am just laying out all the colors that I'm using of course. And then I actually moved to the floor to work and sat on the floor while I did this. It was a lot easier to construct there. This really doesn't take that long, which is cool because it's so easy to tie them on to the doll. And if your wooden stick is super long like mine, you can go ahead and trim it down. If you have a hand saw, that would be the best. So I just have this one here and it was really, really difficult to get steady clips on my own without someone holding the wood for me. So it's kind of shaky, but you see what I did. Now I have it hanging on the wall and you did see me trim it a little bit, but now I'm going to actually trim a shape. So I did a kind of slanted off-centered triangle. And that is it. This is a spin on the 1970s fad macrame, which was a craft that a lot of people did back in the day. I'd like to do a couple macrame projects in the future. Let me know what you guys think because there's tons of different design variations that you can do where you tie the strings together and everything. So it looks really awesome and some people actually hang plants in them, which I think is pretty cool. You can probably see I have a lot of excess wood still, but I'm leaving it longer so I can add more strings in the future. I think that this is something that I wanna build upon and make even bigger and just cover that whole part of the wall. So if I do change it, I'll let it make a little guest appearance in a future video. The third and final project is my favorite. It is a DIY mouse pad in the shape of a vinyl record. For this, you'll need a cork tile and something round to trace. I chose to use a plate, it's a perfect size, and also an X-Acto knife to trim around this. And you're just going to cut around a few times so the indent is big enough, then you can move the plate and you can work at it a little bit more to go all the way through the cork. It's not very thick, so it doesn't take a very long time. Once that was cut out, then I took a piece of black patterned scrapbook paper and I flipped it to the white side. Then I traced around the plate again so I have the same exact size circle. I cut it out of course and then I am going to attach it to the round piece of cork. To do this I'm using Mod Podge and this is going to act as a glue and a sealant. So first you're going to attach it of course by coating the cork with a pretty generous layer and make sure to pay attention to the edges that you get those all covered so none of the sides will come up on the paper later. Place the paper down and smooth it out so there are no air bubbles and then you're just going to let that dry with something heavy and flat on top for at least a half hour I'd say. While that's drying you can print out a label that represents your favorite band or artist or song. I chose Hall & Oates Sarah Smile because Sarah is my name and that is one of my favorite songs of all time. At first I printed it out at four inches in diameter, but I decided here that it was a little small, so I printed one that was five inches in diameter. Of course, it will depend on your preference and whatever size you're making your mouse pad, so it's up to you. To make sure it's centered, you can do a little bit of measuring or you can just eyeball it. It's okay if it's not perfect, but I did a little measuring tape action here and then I put Mod Podge in the middle and on the back of the record label and also on the black part of the paper. After that was attached and making sure that the air bubbles are out of course, you can go ahead and coat the entire record with the Mod Podge and this is going to act as a sealant so it's going to be waterproof quote unquote but you don't want to dunk it in water. It's just going to make it so it doesn't get ruined as easily. And of course it's going to make it shiny too.
In the comments section below, let me know who would be on your record mouse pad. If I had to choose a band from current times, I think it would be the 1975. I've been listening to them for probably four years now, and they're amazing. Another top contender would be Neon Indian. Beautiful music as well. Also, if you enjoyed this video, remember to click the red subscribe button to join the Socraftastic family. We would love to have you here. And also click that bell button so you will be notified every single time I post a video. for watching I hope you enjoyed the video if you did let me know by giving it a big thumbs up and also check out all my links in the description box below to my most recent videos if you haven't caught up with the Soulcraft Tastic playlist yet then go and do that I'm planning to do a lot more art and drawing on this channel this year along with DIYs product reviews and whatever else you guys want so leave your recommendations below and follow me on social media if you want to I will see you guys in my next video very soon goodbye which is a haul, by the way. A craft supply haul. So more hauls, too. They're coming your way. Does it look like I have ears? <laughs>